when you've finished clipping your dog and you want to clean your blades, you get a soft tooth brush and give it a flick like that. Get rid of any excess hair that's um, accumulated on the blade. And you put it onto your little blade like that. And what I use is the clipper the blade wash. And we put a little bit into a container like that. Make sure that you have a nice sort of flattish container that you can get it into. And then I just sort of tilt it a little bit. And then I turn my clipper blades on and you pull it in. But you don't put it right down because you don't want to get the blade wash into your assembly. So after it's, it's had a really good clean, I turn it off, holding it down, and you dry them with a cloth that I keep with everything. And then you get your oil and you put plenty of um, oil on these blades. And I turn it on and go like that and then turn it off and you remove your blade and I like to store it in this uh, little bag um, with as much oil on it as possible because that stops them from going rusty and then I store it in a blade container. recording. When you're clipping your dog sometimes the um, blade gets quite hot and you don't want to burn your dog so I like to use this uh, cool lube and you just um, give it a light spray and that will cool the blade off and then you can keep clipping. Otherwise if you want to and you've got more blades you can use another blade. And, and alternate between two different ones. These are Anders clippers and I've got a number four head on at the moment um, which I'll probably use in winter on our toy poodle so that the cut is not too close but in summer I'd use a number 10 which would be a lot closer um, cut. Also number 10 is good for doing around their bottoms and the face you know, um, anywhere you want it to be a little bit shorter. And when I'm doing the feet um, of Toy Poodle, I'm using the, the 5 8 um, Ultra Edge Anders blade there. And it's a tiny little blade that you can use to get the hair out of their paws, which is really important for a dog like a Toy Poodle. Um, do you use that on their face as well or not? I can use that on their face too as well. Sometimes I do it around her eyes with that little blade. Because it's so little, you can get into places on a small dog. Much, It's much easier. It'd be much safer bigger, too, wouldn't yeah, it? Much yeah, much safer. And, and you can see that that is so much smaller. Than oh, well, thank you for that. Do you want to go to the scissors now? So I know that there are times where groomers, I've heard all the horror stories, that sometimes dogs get cut and groomers, I guess they're in a hurry, dogs misbehave. Uh, a lot of groomers have pointy scissors, probably more efficient. So I don't know if you uh, agree with the pointy scissors or whether you think it's probably better to start off with something a little less dangerous. Uh, I've just used some normal scissors that I'd use on myself, on my own hair, if I was cutting it. Uh, they're probably not the sharpest scissors in the world, um, but I don't want to have an accident, obviously, with the dog. So that's the sort of uh, pair of scissors that I would use, or even those. They're quite good too, and they they actually haven't even got a point. Great. Um, for inside the ears, um, we have a special tool here, and what happens with this is you. Um, you put the dog's head on its side. Could you hold it up closer to the camera for me, please, Tony, and just hold it still? They're like a tweezer, are they? They're, they're like a tweezer. They're a little bit different. Um, what you do is you get the, the dog to have its head on the side, put your hand in and, and get the hair. Um, I often find twisting it a little bit with my fingers helps. And then you get this tool 
and you put it around that hair and then it, it totally grips onto it and then you can pull. Um, the dog may yelp or may not yelp, depending on your dog. Um, sometimes, Ella, the thought of having it done is worse than having it done. Yes, yeah, so I know that she yelps sometimes just looking at them. But That's yeah, right. It's, so it's they, they something you have to it, do. But um, it does prevent ear infections in the dog. And it also, um, yeah, so it, the hair will just keep growing. You'll get ringlets, you know, growing out of their ears. So you do have to remove it uh, for their health. Um, the toenails on a toy poodle, I use these little cat scissors, they're stainless steel, and I find with those, I have a lot better um, I, control over cutting the dog's nails um, than other clippers that I've used in the past. Um, the vet told me about the cat ones, and they are really, um, if you do happen to nick your dog at all ever there's a special uh, styptic pencil that you can get and you wet the end of that and then rub it onto it and that should um, fix the problem up but um, I haven't had to really I've probably used it once in you know 10 years of clipping. Well I guess you get better at it and the dog um, also gets a little better at it even though she's a bit of a misbehaviour yes, our dog yes. she's a shocker but yes, doesn't like it loves it when it's finished <laughs> and, and this might be worth mentioning. Um, it's, recording. it's probably worth mentioning that if you are going to clip your dog, it's a really good idea to buy yourself a plastic apron because you can put that on, and um, and then you won't get covered in hair when you're doing this. Otherwise, you really do get covered in hair. So. Um, Plastic okay. apron is a great idea. Great idea, yes. I know it sticks all over me after you've done it when it's out there and the wind's blowing and it's everywhere. Mm. Well, thank you for that. Now, after you've cleaned and oiled your clipper blades, to store them so that they won't rust and they will, you know, uh, stay really good for a long time, I wrap them up in a little bit of cloth like that which gets quite oily, like that is, um, you can see that there's a lot of oil on that, and then I store it. And by being wrapped up, um, it stops them getting rusty as well, and they're nice and oily. Wonderful. We might have a better look at those scissors. I couldn't get to focus before now, so I'll just come over here and have a little look down at these nail scissors, etc. And I should be able to focus a little better now. That's beautiful. When the hand's moving, it makes it really difficult. That's perfect. They're the tweezers. Let's open those up a little bit so we can see them better. That's beautiful. And we have the brand of this thing here that we use. We have, just to mention something, we have used a much cheaper set from, I think we got it from Aldi actually, for poor pets, and we found it didn't work, not on not on Ella's very fine hair, it just was impossible, so you get what you pay for. These are, are, are they start in Australia around $300, possibly a lot cheaper in America and some of the European places, we tend to get a bit ripped off here with things, and um, yeah, so in Australia a few hundred dollars, and do a comparison, change rate, look it up and get good brands. What was the other brand you mentioned? I think Oyster. Oyster is another good brand. Yeah, you don't have to go to a million dollars like some groomers probably do, but you want it to work. Um, you would recoup the money, you know, in a couple of clips. Well, that's the idea of the whole, mm -hmm. the whole doing it yourself thing, isn't it? Especially when, like us, you've got two dogs. It can mount up to be a lot. Um, there's that stiptus stuff, nice and clear. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Tony.